And the Chairman of the Presidential Task Force, uh, Honorable uh, Ministers, members of the PTF, our distinguished uh, guests, um, gentlemen of the press, um, good evening. So today I'll be talking briefly on the role of uh, students in the safe reopening of schools. But before I do this, I'd like to, first of all, just um, thank INEC for your support. You have been a critical partner in the COVID response. Um, I remember when I first started, we relied heavily on you for the initial part of the pandemic response. We never called you and um, you failed to, to, to respond to our requests. So we are very grateful. We also remember the memory of um, you lost a staff, I believe one of your drivers, and uh, we wish to honor his memory as well. But thank you so much, uh, Chairman, and uh, your team. Um, we had a meeting today with the Northern Traditional Leaders Council, um, with the Grand Patron, the Sultan of Sokoto, His Eminence, uh, Mohammed Saad Abu Bakr, and uh, the Acting Chair as well of the NTLC. We will be um, uh, distributing the community of this meeting in the coming days, but it was a very useful meeting where we looked at the role of uh, the traditional institution in, in dealing with the COVID pandemic, in particular, changing the messenger, not necessarily changing the message itself, because I think the message has already been transmitted and received, but maybe the messenger needs to change. So we'll be working closely, moving on uh, with, the, with the Committee of Traditional Rulers. We know they did an excellent job with the polio eradication, and we want to um, leverage on that. To, to, to improve our response. Um, in terms of the issue of international airports, um, as, as, as stated earlier by the chairman and uh, my colleague, um, yes, we've been having problems with the travel portal. This isn't unexpected. This is uh, a new portal and um, the demand on it has been significant. We are working day and night with our partners, CarCovid, uh, through their IT units to resolve some of these issues. For the moment, we have put aside the mandatory requirement for a QR code for people boarding flights into Nigeria. But this is a temporary solution. Uh, eventually, we will put back uh, this requirement. Um, because we've done that, I'm appealing to all travelers from outside the country to please try and go onto the portal, upload their health questionnaire, upload their COVID-19 PCR, and try to pay. If you want to clear the airport quickly, this is the best way to do it. But if you want to spend a decent period of time at the airport trying to sort this out, then you don't need to go onto the portal. You'll still be allowed to board, but it will be much, much easier for you if you have everything at hand. Um, yesterday, it was taken barely a minute plus for people who had everything to, to, to clear the port health site and move on to immigration. So. I will appeal to travelers to please continue to use the portal. For those that are leaving the country, yes, we know we haven't put any guidance in terms of what is needed. This is because different countries have different requirements. It is the responsibility of travelers to check with their airline and also to check with the country they are visiting what those requirements are. Um, but where there's a need for PCR testing, we will add additional information on our system so that passengers can know where to go and have a test done. We are aware of um, instances where COVID PCR tests are being presented that are fake, and uh, we are working with authorities to deal with this as it arises. So I'll move on to my main theme today, which is the role of students in the safe reopening of schools. So we know that state authorities are in the process of planning to reopen schools. The PTF is appealing to state governments to ensure that two things happen. One, that a risk assessment is done for all schools that are reopening, and that measures are put in place for schools to reopen safely in strict compliance to um, national and uh, state guidelines. We know that Nigerian youths make up a vast majority of our population. In fact, 44% of the population based on the 2020, 2010 figures are below the age of 15. The median age in our country is 18 years. And we have, that means we have a youth bulge. And the youths, this particular age group, are the ones that are actually the primary drivers of the pandemic because they are the ones that are least likely to be symptomatic. 
they are the ones that are more likely to go out, socialize, and pick up the infection. Almost every family in Nigeria has a young person between the ages of 18 to 40 years. And any form of um, letdown or um, relaxation can be fatal to the people around them, especially those at, that belong to the vulnerable groups, those below the age, um, those above the age of 60, and those with pre-existing conditions such as diabetes, hypertension, etc. There's no doubt COVID-19 is still a significant threat to us all and cannot be ignored as schools plan to open. Other than an effective lockdown, it's been shown consistently that school closure is one of the most effective ways of uh, dealing with, uh, with the COVID pandemic. It definitely, almost certainly, poses a greater risk to the health and safety of the parents and the grandparents more than that of the students, and maybe to a lesser extent to, to the teachers, especially if they are of advanced age. We are appealing to students, parents, and school officials to continue to take precautionary measures that can change the current position of young people as high transmitters and turn them into champions of behavior in the sphere of influence. And parents. While governments are ensuring institutions take the necessary action to safeguard health, safety, and security of students across the country, students, on the other hand, also have responsibilities. These responsibilities include the non pharmaceutical interventions that we have mentioned over and over again. They must ensure physical distancing, stay two meters apart within classrooms dining halls, hallways, adhere to alternate attendance arrangements. This is a difficult period for all of us. It's not a normal period. Class attendance will most likely be different from what it used to be. So therefore, students need to comply with any change in the arrangement in terms of attendance to classes or splitting of classes, etc. For our young, we know that they have peers and they have schoolmates that they haven't seen for a long time, and we urge them to socialize with them with uh, great caution. We are also asking parents to please explain these life-saving guidelines to their children. Ensure that your children have masks. Ensure they have access to hand sanitizers. Ensure that they maintain physical distances and they understand the importance of these measures. Importantly, ensure that they wash their hands thoroughly and safely dispose used masks um, upon returning home. There's no doubt the reopening of schools and learning facilities must happen at some stage. We cannot run away from this. The education of our children is important, but it must be done in a safe manner and we must continue to take responsibility in the fight against COVID-19. Finally, the PTF remains committed to supporting students, families, and the education sector through meaningful advisories that will guarantee the safety of our communities. Thank you.